listen to your wife and get some new tires. I don't understand why you're so stressed out. We're finally gonna take a few days and get out of Thunder Canyon to go relax. Back in the car, stay in there. So we had a member of the RV Oz Squad reach out to us about six or seven months ago, Matt and Carol. They own an RV park, a golf course, about two hours from Thunder Canyon in a place called Hartzell, Alabama. And Matt's been sending me emails and texts constantly. You guys, get out of there. Come take a break. They knew how hard we were working. We've been just working ourselves to death here at Thunder Canyon. Where are we going, Sage? We're going to Hawaii! We're going to Hawaii! We're not going to Hawaii, Bob. I mean, we're not going to Hawaii. No, we're not. We're going to Hartzell. We're going to Quail Creek. Hawaii of Alabama. There is no such thing as Hawaii, Alabama. <laughs> but you need to slow down and relax. Yeah, you have to slow down. Relax. I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning, done three loads of laundry. I've got four emails out, eight more to go. You're 56 years old, and your best idea when you see me stressed out is to tell me to relax. What does my age have anything to do with this? I married you for your maturity. <laughs> Calm down. Start getting excited about the trip. Says the man who's sitting down drinking coffee. I am excited, but there's a lot to do. What's to do? Well, I mean, we just got to get ready and go. It's only a couple hour ride. Well, you just got to get ready and go. I got to get the kid ready. I got to get the dog ready. I got to get the chickens ready. So each one has a different bedtime story that you have to read it. And if you read the wrong story to the wrong chicken, they have nightmares. Oh no. <laughs> Does that mean that I'll have nightmares too? <laughs> Worst nightmares, Dan. You're stressing me out and there's no need for this. We're finally getting out of oh, here and going to relax for a little while. I'm stressing you out while yeah. you sit there and drink your coffee? Babe, okay, trust I God. It's all gonna work out exactly the way it's supposed to. You're saying I don't so trust okay. God? You think that's gonna make me relax? Yeah, you need you to relax. You telling me to relax is gonna make me relax? Like, it hasn't occurred to me that I should probably relax at some point in time. You see the shirt you're wearing right now? Life is good. We are blessed. It Enjoy is, it. It's good because your wife is working so hard. <laughs>some really close friends and a lot of you guys actually that have been saying you need to take a break <laughs> step away from thunder canyon for a little bit all our loved ones here at thunder canyon are telling us to get out of here we've been here 13 months so we finally listen to the advice of our loved ones and then this happens <laughs>
If you had seen our video from last week, you can see that Mercedes was really riding me to change our front tire. Look I, at how nice and bald these tires they're are. They're not bald. I've got like three sixteenths of an inch here. Be sure to mention this in the comments and tell John, listen to your wife and get some new tires. And literally the day after we released last week's video where Mercedes was complaining about me changing that front tire, the unthinkable happened. <laughs> Well, the tire just blew out on us in the highway. I just said, let's slow down for a little bit and boom. The front tire blowout is the most dangerous blowout you can have. Now, when this blowout happened, one of the things that made it really, really scary is it couldn't have happened in a worse place. This is so scary. We were on an overpass about 60, 70 feet over two highways. And when we came to stop, was at the point where two, a three-lane highway and a two-lane highway came together. So when I when I came to the island, I, I, I kind of put the truck in an angle so the tip was on this side and the rear end was this side so that at least I'd have a little bit of room to work to get that tire off. Yeah, because your back was basically to the highway. Right. So when I realized that my husband's literally putting his life on the line to get us out of the situation, I feel pretty powerless. Like, what can I do that could actually be helpful in this situation? We had these emergency flashers. So I opened the, um, the sunroof and I started flashing them and trying to point people um, to go away from him. I believe it was a tire failure by Michelin. What happened was the tire actually delaminated. All five of my other tires are in good shape. I remember when I was younger, my dad would always stress to me that your vehicle talks to you. So when you start smelling things that don't smell right, when you start hearing things that new sounds that the vehicle doesn't normally make, you know, you don't fix it by turning up the volume. You fix it by lowering the volume, listening to it and figuring out what it is. Now, a couple of miles before this happened, I felt a shake in the wheel. We slid off safely into a gas station. I got out, inspected the pressure and the tires. The tires looked fine. We had about another 50 minutes to travel to get to our destination. But which it was, was shaking. The well, steering wheel was going like this and the whole vehicle. It was given a little felt. bit of a shake. And by the time I left the gas station and started driving again, it started getting worse. The other warning sign that the vehicle was giving us was the alignment. It started really veering. It had a hard pull to the right. And so I thought it was in alignment. Now, interestingly enough, as soon as I got the spare tire on the good tire, the alignment was fixed. So I did listen to my truck. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know this is probably hard because you feel like I'm trying to pick on you. I'm not no, trying to pick on you. No, it's, I know, I know. Well, truth is I deserve it. I probably should have changed that tire before we made this trip. I wasn't pulling. Um, we were going on a two hour ride. I thought we had plenty of rubber left. I was wrong. I was definitely wrong and I should have changed that tire before we hit the trip. One of the first things that went through my head once I was in the side of the road, okay, my spear is up underneath the, beneath the bed. Thank God I had a TST sensor on that spare tire. I had a spare tire that I could use. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than a spare tire you can't use. Right. And a lot of people don't think to monitor the spare. Yep. I think we did a lot of things right and a lot of things we could have done better. Um, monitoring the spare was really good, but guess what we didn't bring with us? We didn't bring our Viair air compressor. And we knowing what we know now, I'm, I'm making a safety kit for the truck and you're gonna hate it. I think we'll even make that next week's video. I'm making a safety kit for the truck so that heaven forbid we have something else happen, we're, we're ready. Well, and the biggest mistake here, guys, is not listening to your wife. Because when your wife says, go check your tires, like when does your wife want you to spend money on the vehicles, right? Never. So when you have your wife co-signing, yeah, Spend the money on the tires. You gotta, you gotta take advantage of that. He could have thrown in some rims or something if he wanted to, and I would have been some flashy rims. Well, we pride ourselves on safety. A lot of our videos are about safety and our being safely, and we pride ourselves on that, those type of videos. But I did not realize that that tire was in such bad shape. Now, just a really quick point. My, thank God my dad taught me this when I was a young man. He taught me that if you ever have blowouts, especially on the front wheels, to never touch the brake. Never, ever, ever touch the brake. It goes against every instinct in your body when there's a problem, you wanna stop and slow down as soon as you can. What I did was I immediately went to the gas, I picked up speed till I grabbed, because as soon as it hit down, it jammed to the left. It was a big boom and then it pulled to the left and I was able to hit the gas and get it back straightened out to a point where then I could go for my brake as I slid off to the right-hand side. 
That was brutal. That was Can insane. I have my glasses back? Yeah. Hey, babe. What? That was kind of hot, though. Oh, it's hot? After you told me I told you so for the first three or four minutes? Okay, he keeps acting like I said I told you so so much. I am a nice wife, okay? <laughs> I don't have to say I told you so because he knows that I told you so. So I don't have to rub it in his face like that. I get my satisfaction in other ways. <laughs> so finally we decided to take Matt up on his offer and get out of Thunder Canyon for three or four days. And boy, did he take good care of us. He put us in a nice room. We broke bread with them. We got to go and drive all over the golf course, hit some balls. You're not old enough to drive. Look at Steve. Look. Daddy, those aren't for you. Hot frog. Oh. Hey, froggy. The, the best thing about getting that relaxation was we were able to spend a, a, quite a few hours with another campground owner. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful park. It's got an 18 hole golf course, they've got a swimming pool there. You know, it, it was nice to go to a park that's been running for so many years. Are you dizzy, kiddo? They were really sweet, but the biggest gift they did was taking us out on the boat. Don't float off. Yeah. It's down, but it just has enough, enough power to turn over that egg. Oh yeah, they took that, us out in a boat. They took us down to their lake house, um, Smith Lake, which is absolutely gorgeous. What a lake system they have. And it's really not a lake. It's this, It's almost like this, um, they it's flooded the valleys yeah. in a portion of the middle of Alabama or the upper northern part of Alabama. And Smith Lake runs for hundreds and hundreds of miles. I yeah. believe Matt said there was a few hundred miles of waterfront all along this. And so Matt took us down to his beach house. We jumped out on the boat. Mercedes was just having a great time. If you are an RV Odd Squad member, Quail Creek is an RV Odd Squad park, guys. So you'll save 10% by letting Matt and Carol know that you're an RV Odd Squad member. The best part about this is we were able to just get out of Thunder Canyon, relax for a while, have fun with some friends, and 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 also try to recenter about what was the next step for Mercedes and I in Thunder Canyon. Yeah, so on our way back to Thunder Canyon, we figured out a lot of stuff that we're gonna be sharing with you guys in the next coming videos. So we'll see you in the next video.